title of my message today is Double-Minded Person. This message is not a message directed at anyone. This message is about my start in life trying to follow the way of God and growing up and compare. So we're going to tie a little with the world back up with what scripture said. We all know where this scripture is quoted in the Bible. We know it's in the New Testament in James. It's mentioned two times. So, James chapter 1, verse 8. But we know that James were talking about Israel. And for us today, we know that everything that written in Scripture also pertaining to us as the future time go. So please turn to James chapter 1 and verse 8, but I'm going to start from verse 6 just to get the context. So verse 6 said, I think it's quote from the King James Version, um, the old King James. So verse 6 said, but let him ask in faith with no doubt, for he who doubt is like a wave of sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. That scripture is very clear said. So, oh, to recognize a double-minded person. And I'll start from myself. So, double-mindedness, it depends on our thinking and how we portray life. As we look forward to the time of the Passover that coming up, we have to think. The Bible said we should examine ourselves to make sure we are on that page that God asks us for. My word are not commandment. That's my message. But God's word is a commandment for all of us. My next slide. A double-minded person is restless, confused, and always in conflict with themselves. I remember growing up as a young man, and I was in here in America, they call it DJ. In Jamaica, we call it selector, people who select the music and play. So while I was growing up, I recognized that you find a lot of people, even me myself used to do this. A lot of people, they will come to the party Saturday night. And tomorrow morning, Sunday, they will be in church. Even people who are living in a double-minded life, and they still partake in God's communion, living a double minded life. So me, as a young man growing up, I looked and I said, is this what the Bible really says? Oftentimes, people don't pay attention to observe all these things of life. It is very difficult for a person who are not driven by the Spirit to understand when it comes on to taking God's commun communion, the, the Bible tells you, I'm going to quote Matthew 5, verse 24, from the New American Standard Bible. It said, leave, leave your offering, therefore, 
at the altar and go first reconcile with your brother before you give that offering. As we're coming up to the time that we're going to do an offering, many times we focus on making amends with others out there, but we're not focusing making amends with ourselves. And that's the key about it. We should acknowledge and examine ourselves to see if we are worthy to partake of the Passover. Double-mindedness is very tricky because sometimes it's difficult for us to see ourselves, but we see others as we live toward this life. We miss the main point that the scripture is asking each and every one of us to do. I'm not saying that we here are doing that, but this is something that others are there are hearing this message and they should recognize that this scripture is really for each and every one, for us to examine ourselves, to partake of the life of Christ. Overcoming double-mindedness. First, we have to have the wisdom of God. Growing up, I know sometimes we are not called, but the Spirit of God is with us, and it's still leading us until we make that right step towards. I remember when I just called. In my community, we didn't have like a Sabbath church that I would go to. So I go on Google and I search for a Sabbath church. So I found the address that there is a New Testament Sabbath church in St. Catherine, Jamaica. When I went there, the first thing that I recognized, I went to a funeral. I was like, what? God has called me, why God would send me here? I have a sister that lives in the town of Old Arbor. So I said, let's sit around and see if I can find somewhere else to fellowship today. So I end up at a particular regular Sabbath church in Old Arbor community. It was around the time of Easter, and they were giving praise to God. The gentleman that do, did the sermon, he do a wonderful message talking about the whole Easter and oh Christ rise. Yes, we don't believe in Easter. And because I was drawn by the Spirit of God, when he finished giving that message, I went up to him. And I said, you did a beautiful message. But there is something that I don't understand. Did Christ die Friday and raise Sunday? He said, yes. I said, you're sure? And I asked the question again. He said, no. But that's what I get paid to say. So, as we have our minister here today, I know that he get paid to lead the flock, but not to tell a lie. So, Continue my journey. Then I move on, and I found another Sabbath church around, I think it's a year out. I end up asking another question. The guy, guy told me that one is a church of God also. He said, yes, Christ died on Friday and rose on Sunday morning from the grave. I was shocked because it I read the scriptures, and what the word of God told me is not what they are saying. So for us, we have to have the spirit of God to recognize when we are called the direction that we're going to go. In the same book of James, James 4, it also be the reference for James 1, 8. And it's a draw near to God. And he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hand from cleanse your hand, you sinner, and purify your heart, you double-minded. And that's when it hit home to me. That I was double-minded 
and not focusing fully on what God's word said, based on what these people are teaching. So I step away from religion in Jamaica. Now started doing a search to find somewhere that believe like I do. Then I found a beautiful group and I'm with them right now. We have to remember that God is calling all over the world. But when that calling is out there and they answer, we need to know, is that the calling that God called us to? Or we are choosing what is comfortable with us. As we come up to taking the Passover, we know that they celebrate Easter already and Passover right ahead, about two weeks from now. But sometimes even people in the church of God, hopefully none of us here have this same thinking. Sometimes we believe that when Christ died on the cross, that it's all over. We don't have to keep some of these holy days. Especially I was, I was talking to another brother of a different faith that believe in the feast. And they told me when Christ died that we don't have to do the Day of Atonement. But if they go back to Matthew 5, 24, they are not thinking that we need to examine ourselves and to make sure, because all of us, we fall short. None of us is perfect. We all have something to work on. And what we need to work on is the double-mindedness of following God's scripture. God's scripture is there to lead us in the right part. It's not hard to understand. It's the way how we do approach it. When we approach God's word, we have to approach God's word with God's mindset. Not the world, because the world mindset will not lead us to God. It will lead us to worldliness. We are not called to worldliness. We call to follow Christ steadfast, one mind, and to go the direction that Christ go. So double-mindedness should not be a part of us. We should study the scripture, make sure the scripture is our guide. And we can always look to what Jesus said. He is our example. He said, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And that is our base. That is our foundation that we are going to stand on. Because we know that without that foundation, we will follow myth. And there is so much myth out there today. We have to lift up Christ. We have to recognize double-mindedness when we see it. And we need to find the scripture. There is a lot of scriptures in the Bible. If we look at the same James 1, and when it said in verse 5, if you lack of wisdom. Any man lack of wisdom, go to God because only God can give us that wisdom. And the wisdom will help us not to be in conflict with ourselves, not to be restless, not to be confused, but have one steady mind towards God's goal is plan of the future. That future is for us to be in that kingdom with Christ and that day when Jesus returned and pick out his call out ones. I hopefully we all can be there with Christ. Have a wonderful Sabbath and enjoy the rest of the message that coming.